Boy, I'm gonna lose some subscribers with this one. <laughs> Everyone, this is it, the final movie that we are reviewing for our lead up to the Oscars, which is literally happening now as I am recording this. By the time this comes out, the Oscars will probably have just ended, meaning this film will probably have swept and probably have won Best Picture. For real, y'all? <laughs> okay, I don't want to come in here and make it sound like I hated this movie. I didn't. I thought this movie was fine, but this is a film that it got nominated for the most uh, categories. Everybody's saying it's the hands down favorite to win. So many critics who I follow were putting it in their top 10 saying it was amazing. I don't see it. I don't understand you people. I am sorry for that, and I am typically a big hobnob, snobby critic myself. I like all the weird indie films. I like all the old throwback films. I can't get with you on this one. Remember how we were talking about Manchester by the Sea? I said every year there's that one thing that gets nominated for Best Picture, and I just can't agree with everybody. Every year there's that one movie, and everybody's like, this one's amazing. And I said, yeah, Manchester by the Sea, that's gonna be mine this year. I apologize! Because <laughs> Manchester by the Sea, I had problems with the pacing, and I felt like at the end of the movie, there was like, oh shoot, I guess it's time to wrap up. So they just started wrapping everything up instantly. And I didn't really care for that. But there were so many things in that film that I was pointing to going, I like this. Oh, that's so good. That's an amazing bit of dialogue. These characters are great. Wow, that was a great moment. <laughs> it was just really at the end where it all kind of fell apart for me. So I was like, yeah, I can't believe that many people like this. This one, oh my god. It fell apart in the fir after the first like 10 minutes. Uh, here's the thing. I don't think it ever really fell apart because I don't think it ever got assembled. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> let me just go ahead and say this. All right. I don't think this is bad. But it is such just an average love story with a couple of good musical numbers in there and some pretty good cinematography with some charismatic actors in there. Like, That's what this film is. And so many people are like, oh, it's such a love letter back to the golden age of Hollywood. And I was like, yeah, when it wants to be. Like, this film, it kept... I have never seen a musical with so few musicals the in there. It's like... Here's the thing, is like, when I grew up, like, my stepsisters were, like, obsessed with the mu with musicals and the theater. We all love, you know, Cats and, and Grease and all that. So it's like, I'll probably enjoy this a bit more than you since you don't really... Have that connection. Yeah, exactly. It's like, where's all the musicals? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna and be like, straight with, all, with you people. We got there right when the movie began. Yeah. And so I left to go and get us popcorn and soda. And there's a little bit of a line, so I missed maybe the first, like, ten minutes of this movie. And then when I got back, it was, like, uh, Ryan Gosling playing some piano, then there's a scene at a party, and then after that, there's a nice little musical number. I was like, damn, that musical number, it was great, it was shot incredibly well, it was all one take. That was amazing. Oh, man, this is the moment that this movie is winning me over. It did not take long for me to really get won over by this film. That is freaking it! That is it. It was all downhill from there. It's like, and like thing, it was literally, there was not another musical number in this entire film. There was a moment which they sang together at the piano at home, but I was like, that's not a musical number, that's just people singing at the piano, that's not a musical number. Then there's a moment at a concert where there's a musical moment, and I'm like, but that's a concert, that is not a musical scene. Then at the very, like, ten minutes left in this film, Emma Stone sings with a black background, like the camera zooms around her, and like that was it, no big spectacle thing. And then there was a dance number after that. Yeah. No singing, but just a dance number. I was like, that, like, here, here, an hour and a half a movie in here where there is not musicals, and they call this a freaking musical. Like, that's the thing, it's like when you went to get popcorn and soda, you like missed two musicals missed two. in a row. Then I get back, within five minutes, there's a third one, and then there's an hour and a half. Of, like, yes, there's moments where people sing, but they are not musicals. Like, it's just, you know, if you come home and you're just playing the piano and you're singing there at the piano, that doesn't count as a musical. Yeah, it's like the thing about musicals is, like, it has to be, like, everything has to stop and everything has to, like, sing and dance. It like, progresses the it story. Progr yes. The story gets progressed through the music. And this, okay. At the beginning, yes, that moment that I, the one of them singing after the party, that progressed, and I was like, man, you're right, everybody was so right about this, it is, 
a tribute to that old something old style. And then like they go to a museum, uh, they go to the planetarium in LA that's famous. And there's a moment in which they like fantasize about dancing around in the yeah. stars again. But I mean, that's like, man, yeah, like it was like maybe a thirty seconds or something. Like it was it's short. Like they were dancing and there was music, but there was no singing. So like very nice cinematography and yes. yeah, kudos to you on that. But God, and I'm not even that mad about. It. I'm just mad that everybody is praising that this is a musical. And I hear people going like, yeah, I couldn't get those songs out of my head. It's like for real, like. All I can think of is the city of stars, <laughs> and I don't have, no, even know any of the words after that. You and we just saw it. <laughs> God, like I saw Moana like what three, four months ago. <laughs> I still have those songs stuck in my head. <laughs> God, Moana, Sing Street, those are two actual musicals, and Sing Street is one of those musicals where it's not like they stop everything to sing the song. Like it's not like they break reality in that. It's about kids forming a band, so when they sing, they're actually singing in the real world. However, those numbers that they're singing, it is portraying what's going through this kid's head at the moment, so it is progressing the plot. It's an amazing way of doing a musical, and the songs are so damn good and so damn catchy. This one, the songs, City of Stars. That's it. No. Repeatedly. Over and over and over again. God damn it. It's like, what? once again, like, you missed the two. I missed the two. I will admit that. I will admit that. I am so sorry, but again... <laughs> If I miss 5% of your movie, and for the rest of it, the only song I get in a musical for 95% of this thing is City of Stars. I don't know the rest of it. <laughs> it's like, that's God, how good was your welcome in Moana? God damn it. <laughs> Fucking God. This is what's going to win the Oscars. God. I'm sorry. Hold on. Center myself. Okay. <laughs> it's like you were just so torn off about it. It's like I'm I'm just like I'm the music, the movie was good. I was just like disappointed, but You sound honestly afraid of me at the moment. I'm sorry. No, but it's like the reason why you're so angry is because of all the hype around Yes. It. I will gladly admit this. This thing was over hyped yes. to hell. Yes. Like I said, so many critics who I follow and who I like turn to for like good movie recommendations, they're like, this is in my top ten, this is in my top five, this is in my top three. This is getting the most Oscar nominations out there. Like I've been hearing amazing stuff about this. But that's only the reason why I'm upset. It's not the reason why I didn't think this was good. Because I was fully aware watching this, like, if this had not been overhyped to me, I would have walked out of it. Like, if I had never heard of this thing, never seen a trailer, never heard anything about this, I would have walked out of this movie just been like, you know what? That was fun. That was a fun little sweet romance story. It was nice. You know, musicals are a bit weird that they just stop doing them all of a sudden for no reason. I've got my problems with it, but you know, it's, it's fine. It is a fine good time at the theater. But, I mean, I, I'm fully aware that I would have given this a B- minus walking out of it. A B- minus walking out if I had not had any hype. It is solely the fact that people are hyping up that much a film that I would give a B- minus to, and everybody's like, it's going to win every single thing in the Oscars. And I was like, don't get me wrong, I'm not stupid. I'm not sitting here being like, but the Oscars are supposed to be noble, and this proud tradition that <laughs> captures the best in films. Like, no, it doesn't. No, it's just it's a big dress-up party. <laughs> However, god damn, it's kind of like saying, the team that's necessarily the best team does not always win the Super Bowl. However, when the Falcons work that goddamn hard, and then the Patriots come in at the last second and just, I don't know, deflate balls at halftime, I don't know how <laughs> they won that. Then yeah, you're gonna be pissed. Doesn't mean they're the best team in the league, but it's like, God, are you kidding me with this crap? It's like, here's the thing. It's like the plot is very by the numbers, but that's how musicals are supposed to be. But what makes up for it are the musicals. Oh my God, you're so right. <laughs> yeah. And this did not have a lot of musical numbers to make up for it, so it's just it very. It was like it forgot it was a musical at yeah, times. Yeah, it's like it tried to be real, but also a musical. It's like pick one or the other, or like. Well, and also it, it, feel, it feels to me like this absolutely was supposed to be a throwback to like 1950s era movies. It was yeah. meant to be a throwback to old school Hollywood, and I can respect that. And also, when you look at the plot of this, the plot is very much 1950s old school yes, Hollywood. Yes, exactly. And I think they did a very solid job of adapting that into like modern day settings with modern day technology, mm -hmm. all of these things. Yes. I think they did a really good job of that. However, eventually there just comes a point in which I was like, 
you know, a lot of things that made those 1950s films great, you don't have in here. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot that you're capturing, but it's almost like, it's almost like if you saw it, it's, wow, it really is kind of like Hollywood. It kind of <laughs> is like, if you look and go, that is an amazing setting. Oh, look at that sunrise. Tink. Oh, cardboard falls over. <laughs> that is what this kind of is. Because, like, man, you are missing so many of the things that made those old films special. And also, I'll be totally honest with you. The era of Hollywood that I romanticize is the 70s. The 1950s, <laughs> I always looked at it like, yeah, it's good. It did what it was supposed to do to get us to the 70s. All right. If somebody, like, I will fully admit, if this was, like, more in line with, like, 1970s style films, I probably would have gotten that connection. I would have gotten that romanticization. But even then, I would have been like, yeah, why do you stop being a musical for half this freaking movie? I was, like, thinking more like the uh, 1940s. Like, I think that was when, like, musicals were the, at its big... This really, to me, was more of, um... Oh god, when was uh, Singing in the Rain? That was 1950s, wasn't it? Was it? I want to say it was. It doesn't freaking matter. It, that's not important <laughs> to this all. Put that phone away. <laughs> god damn. Uh, yeah, so, I gotta say, like I said, there are things I like in here. Yes. Let me go ahead and state those. Yes. I think that Ryan Gosling and Nimma Stone are charismatic as all hell. They are great on screen together. This is like the third time they've been in a movie as a couple. So clearly, like, they have chemistry that works. And you can see out there, the sets are great in here. Mm -hmm. I think the cinematography is yes. solid. There's really good colors all throughout it. And also, like I said, when this movie works, it works. Right. I will admit, I missed the first two musical numbers. Yeah, it's like... And it's but that musical number I saw, I was like, God, the choreography is great no, it's in like, that. You would have absolutely loved the first two musicals, like, especially the one that you missed after, like, the Highway musical. I saw part of the Highway one. Yeah. Uh, because, like, I we got there, we sat down, then the Highway one started up, and I was like, all right, I'm going to go real quick. Yeah, it's like, like you said, like, with the musicals, musical parts, it's all, like, shot on one one scene, and is, and is constantly moving with the characters as they dance down the hallways and everything and it's like wow this is all one take and these people had to choreograph everything to get everything just right and that's all great but then when it stops being a musical it's just, it's just a very <laughs> average by the numbers romance movie yeah. like all right cool and like the only thing that really saves that at all is that yes yeah, cinematography is nice it's and uh What's her name's Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone are good on screen together, but it's like, even then, man, you can't save just average. <laughs> you can't. Like, it made me keep thinking back to whatever that movie was that they did with their couple and had like Steve Carell in there, it was like three different romance stories going at once. I walked out of that, I was like, yeah, it's fine, it's a fine romance movie. I was like, this really, I'm at the same quality as that. Problem is, most people agreed that movie was just fine. This one, everybody is like, it's the most amazing. Oh my goodness, like, also, I love. I just want to point out, Samuel Jackson said that he put this movie in, stopped watching it after 10 minutes. I love that between him and me, we have one full, complete viewing of this movie. <laughs> uh, I can ask him for help to fill me in on the blanks. Um, but yeah, it's like, I... And here's the thing that I love. I got out of the theater, and I was, like, tweeting about how nervous I was to say this stuff, and then I finally said, listen, guys, I can't hide anymore. I think this movie is overhyped. I got so many replies from people going, thank you, dear God, why do people like this movie? I'm like, Maybe the same thing can happen with this uh, reaction video. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> God, I will, I will gladly put in the title down below, most unpopular opinion ever. I was like, like I said, I don't think it's bad. I just think it is very, very okay. But in a year, like, this is the last film that I have seen in my lead-up to the Oscars. The only one that I wasn't able to see was Lion. So I saw eight of the nine Best Picture nominees. And out of all of them, I think this is an eighth place for me. Like, I'm trying to think, like, okay, Hell or High Water and Moonlight are my top two. Uh, then let's see, we've also got in there uh, Hidden Figures is way up there for me. Uh, let's see, Manchester by the Sea, not that high up there, but still in there. Uh, Fences, Fences is probably in like my third place up there. So yeah, it's definitely not in the top five. Uh, God, what are some of the, what are the other two that got nominated that we, no, I can't remember. Hey, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> I guess they didn't leave that big of an impact, but I mean, this one's not leaving the best <laughs> impact either. Um, Hacksaw Ridge, it's definitely not as good as Hacksaw Ridge was. Uh, yeah, there's only one other one that I can think of that I can't think of, and I can pretty much guarantee it was better than this one. Yeah, it is just really disappointing. And it's like, you might be saying, well, what's the story of this? Emma Stone is an actress who wants to be in movies, and Ryan Gosling wants to save jazz music. 
And which, I'm sorry, oh god, I'm going, I feel like such a tool for coming in here and saying this, but again, everybody is saying, I hate whenever I stop and say stuff like this, because I feel like I'm trying to put myself up on a pedestal and be like, yes, allow me to say my word, when this is a situation where I should not have a word in this, this should be something that other people are saying, but I can't help it, this is just a thought going through my head right now. Last year, the big controversy at the Oscars was the whole hashtag Oscars so white thing because everybody was white. Everybody with a nomination was white. In this film, you've got hidden figures, you've got lion, you've got fences, you've got multiple films and actors and actresses nominated uh, who are people of color or, you know, like Moonlight, which they're focusing on like uh, gay people of color. And it's like, oh God, finally, we're getting some different voices in here. This is amazing. And the one that is like the long shot to like that is head and shoulders above everybody else as far as like who's going to win this year is the one about white people saving jazz <laughs> i was like are you fucking kidding me with this shit hollywood and it's like i think the main reason why this thing is like the favorite to win this year is simply because this is a film that like yes it's a tribute to old school hollywood and it's like it is and don't get me wrong like there's a song that emma stone has about how important it is like celebrate the dreamers out there and the artists out there and how important it is to support those people. And it's like, yes, I agree with all of that, but let's be real. The reason this is hands down the favorite to win is because Hollywood likes nothing more than kissing its own ass. <laughs> Hollywood loves to feel a lips against its fat hams. That is what <laughs> this, that's what this industry loves and that's what this movie is. And that's why the Oscars exist. Dear God, yeah. <laughs> Dear God, it's Oscarception. <laughs> the Oscars are going on right now, and ah, uh, God, like I said, I look forward to the Oscars every year because it's fun. It's fun seeing all these movies. Uh, it gives me an excuse to go out there and really find some interesting films and see some different stuff. And I did that this year. I probably would not have seen Moonlight this year. I wouldn't have seen Hell or High Water this year if it was not for how much people were saying how good these films were. Actually, Hell or High Water, I saw that before the nominees came out, so forget that. <laughs> But Moonlight, I saw that because it got the nominations. So yeah, I see so many amazing films every single year because of these. But there's always that one that I'm just like, why on earth do people like this so much? This was it. God, and I, I feel so bad about this because like I have met fans like in the real world who told me how much they like La La Land. I was like, dude, I cannot wait to check that out. Thank you for telling me about that. I'm like... I'm sorry, man. I can't be there with you on this one. Ah. Uh, it's like, yeah, it'd be funny if, like, the, uh, if Lion, the, the one, one that we didn't see one. Yeah, and then you actually go see it. It's like, wow, this is way better than this La is La Land. Yeah, that's, that's the thing this year is that I made my personal favorite 10 uh, movies list, and I made that before we started seeing all these Oscar films. And even though I saw a lot of films like Moonlight and Fences, which I would hands down say are better than many of the films I put on my favorite films of the year list, none of them would have made it onto my personal favorite uh, list. Like, none of them would have made it into my personal top ten, mm -hmm. even though, like, there are those films I applaud and definitely go, those are better than the films that I name as my ten favorite. I am very curious, would Lion have made it onto my personal favorite? I don't know. Because <laughs> we saw, like, eight movies back to back, and none of them made it into that top ten. So yeah, I am kind of curious, like, oh man, Lion. Uh, I was like, well, we'll have to, have to wait till after we'll the see. Oscars, so. I hope Lion sweeps this whole thing. Like, I just, I just hope something shuts La La Land up. I hope something just is like, it ain't that good. It ain't that special. <laughs> it's God. Like, it's like, I really want Hidden Figures to win. Like, that's definitely the people's choice, and for a good reason. Yeah. And like, you know, there is hype, but it's not over hype. Yeah, I think that, to me, the top three for me are Finch's Moonlight and Hell or High Water. In fact, Hell or High Water is my personal favorite. Yeah. But I think those are the three best, like, actual made films. But if Hidden Figures wins, I'm applauding. <laughs> it's not because, like, yeah, it was a really good film, really good message, really solid on all fronts. And, again, this year, I kind of think Hidden Figures probably just should win. Just kind of, yeah. you know, like, we're sorry for last year. <laughs> And also for literally everything else that happened last year. <laughs> so yeah, if that one wins, I'm totally fine with it. Like, I, at this point, I'm applying literally anything but La La Land. Dear God. <laughs> and again, I just want to remind everyone, I'd give this a B minus. I would mm -hmm. gladly give it a B minus. But dear God, I don't want the B minus student being the valedictorian. <laughs> 
I don't want them up there giving the graduation speech when there's like the straight A honor roll sitting there on the front row like, yeah, motherfucker, yeah, all right. Oh, I'm so glad that the hunky dude got there and played piano. Wow. <laughs> Dear God. All right. Well, that's it. We got to start watching the Oscars. Yeah. This is probably going to go up as soon as the Oscars end, which might be good for me because if everybody <laughs> out there, if it La La Land wins and everybody then goes on YouTube and like, La La Land, let me check that out. I'm like, that might be the perfect time to put out. <laughs> I didn't plan it that way. But dear God. All right. How many times did I say dear God during this review? <laughs> All right, thank you guys for tuning in. This was all of our Oscar movies. I'm so tired. I want to see Get Out this weekend, goddamn it. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. So, yeah, see you guys next year when we do this again. Bye. Bye. Hopefully we'll be organized next time. <laughs> Fuck this movie, man. <laughs>